So this topic probably doesn't sound very interesting, but I promise it's at least somewhat interesting. Keep in mind that everything I'm saying here is about the most efficient and profitable design of grocery stores, so don't go complaining if your neighborhood Tesco or Safeway isn't exactly the same. But chances are, the next time you go to a grocery store, you'll notice at least some of these principles at work. Let's start with the entrance to the grocery store. Americans in particular love shopping in the counterclockwise path. For this reason, the door to the grocery store will typically be on the right-hand side in the United States, and the checkout counters will be on the left. In the UK, it's often the opposite. For this reason, researchers speculate that this tendency to move in one direction is linked to the side of the road that the two demographics drive on. This tendency actually works in the store's favor as well. Research shows that the profits are higher in U.S. grocery stores with an entrance to the right. It allows individuals to move in the path that they like and also exposes shoppers to the most amount of merchandise possible. In fact, Americans spend on average $2 more per trip when they move through a grocery store in a counterclockwise pattern. This may not seem like much, but when considering that every American goes to the grocery store an average of 1.5 times per week or 78 times a year, this amounts to enormous differences in profits. The periphery of a grocery store is also very calculated. Items that are almost always purchased in a trip to the grocery store, milk, meat, and eggs, are spread out around the perimeter to force the shopper to be exposed to the most merchandise possible. Shoppers will almost always need to go to these sections, so the position of the milk, meat, and eggs dictates the way that a shopper can move through the store. Within the center aisles, some retailers will put the most sold items in the center of the aisles to force the shoppers to walk by even more merchandise. Looking at the cereal section, we can see the principle of eye level is buy level. In the ideal circumstance, the most profitable cereals are put at eye level. This often means that large brand name cereals are put in these middle shelves. At kids' eye level, retailers will often put the sugary kind of cereal that kids will pester their parents for. Often on the bottom levels are the bulk price or generic brand cereals. Those who are being frivolous are usually willing to look around for the best deals and often have clear intent to buy the product ahead of time. It's much more likely that individuals will impulsively buy brand name cereal than bulk size generic cereal. On the top level is usually the healthy or small brand cereal. Usually those who are buying healthy cereal have clear intent to buy that cereal, and profits are often lower on these cereals. Also a prime location for items that retailers want to push is the end caps, or the end of aisles. Almost all shoppers will pass these end caps because of the perimeter pattern we discussed earlier. Interestingly, the liquor store monopoly in Sweden uses this principle in reverse. The monopoly was created by the government to promote moderation in alcohol consumption, so one of the things they do to prevent impulse purchases is not have any end cap displays. So that's all the ways that the layout of grocery stores is designed to manipulate you. Next time you go to the grocery store, look out for some of these retail principles, and I'm sure you'll spot at least some of them. There's no one definition to what makes something a country. What decides if a country is a country is essentially whether or not other countries agree that the country is indeed a country.